It has a, a circuit, uh, kind of like a turning signal, and has an M next to it. I'm not sure what that is. Okay, yeah, we'll come in a second. Let me just explain this. But let me actually restart it. All right, so in this example of the beam, we are going to build this beam. And if we see, we have an immovable support, and then we have a support which is movable along long x or longitudinal axis. And we have a three forces separated by these distances, and this is 0.5 meters distance. <coughs> so how we are going to attack this problem? We will start a SOLIDWORKS, and we will go to a tools, options, document properties, if we go to a unit, we will set it up to be in a millimeters, grams and seconds. We will start a sketch to make the structural welding member and the sketch we will start just as a line from the zero. Put the dimension up to the first so from the left node up to the first point, which will be 0.6 meters or 600 millimeters. Then we will place another line collinear with this one. And this line length will be 0 0.900 millimeters. And now we will put another two lines. One will be 1500. And the last line. The last line is going to be a point three or point five. It looks like point five, so let's put point five. So it will be a five hundred millimeters or point five meters. Now we have our sketch fully defined. We are going to build the features. We are going to build the weldments and this will be the structural member and in this case we are not going we will select any rectangular tube will done the, will do the job and let's say that the tube is 70 by 40 and there will be only one group and the group that we are going to create we are also going to rotate the profile because the profile right now is horizontally aligned and we want the force one to be vertical so we are going to rotate profile for a 90 degree and press OK. We are going to choose material and in this case really doesn't matter so I can put like 1023 carbon steel and this define my model. The next thing that I will do, I go to simulation. I go to a study advisor and start a new study. It will be a static. Now, we already applied materials is transferred, so we are going to put the fixed geometries. Left one is a fully fixed. So the left one can be a fixed geometry. So the node here is a fixed geometry <coughs> and the node on the right will be used the reference geometry and we will allow it to move along the X so we will choose in this case this is the top plane we will choose the front plane as a reference I will choose the node on the right and I'm going to fix it in a vertical 
and fix it in out of plane click OK that will take case that, that will take care of the fixed geometry now let's put the forces and if we see the forces there are three different forces and they are all nodal force so I click at the node reference plane will be front and I click let's say first the force First, the force at the at the node number C. What will be here? It will be a vertical, and it will be the forty thousand. If I choose the node, and I will choose the reverse direction. Now I'm going to repeat the same things. Force. It will be again the nodal force. It will be the front plane. And now I'm going to the next node. And again it will be vertical force. Come in. And the vertical force and the vertical force will be 32,000 and again we will reverse the direction so we reverse the direction here and we will take the last one okay yes yeah, so we will take the last one for a 16 kilonewtons force of the 16 in a vertical 16,000 we will again we know that it will be reverse direction nodal force that's this guy here this node here in a reference to the front plane 16,000 and vertical and here is your model done now if I run this simulation here is how this beam will, will bend so that the formation of the beam is intuitive now if I go back to the results and I go list beam force my transversal force will be actually not the list beam force but define beam diagrams I want a shear force in a direction one which will be my transversal force through all beams and it is very intuitive okay here is my shear force now I have a question for you where this beam if it breaks where it will be break where it will break what is the most critical cross section what did we say? Where will the moment, the bending moment be the best, the biggest? Where it changed the sign. And here you see that here the force goes from, a, from pushing under to pressing at the top. So, we already know that our moment diagram will show that the highest moment is actually here. So, if we go back to the results and we go define beam diagram, and now I choose the moment in a direction two and select OK. And I take a look. Look where the moment is. Where the maximum moment is. It's this 66,000 uh, Newton meters. OK, 66 kilonewton meters is here. That's actually where your beam is exposed to the biggest bending and where you know it may fail it will not in this case but actually we can also see that if we pray if we plot we can also plot the factors of safety although for a st statics portion of class we don't do that. so here are the moment diagrams so now you will just do alt print screen and copy this to your report and finally you can get the reactive forces. 
Least result force. And reactive forces. We will choose the plane to be in the front. And we will choose this guy here. And this guy here. Say update. And here are our reactive forces. You can see that there is only 7,000, oh no, 74,800 newtons, 74.8 kilonewtons, and 128 kilonewtons on the right. If you do the manual summation, you will come to the same results. Okay, well, this concludes this example. <laughs>